Good morning, my outstanding friends. You, if you've been around uh, watching my stuff recently, uh, just within the last few days, two days ago, I put this up about if dragons were real, does it affect your eternity? And do you see what that coin shows there? It shows some kind of dragonish creature attacking a fish. Well, here's what it relates to. Now, this is what it relates to. This is the fish. Now, that's the fish's body. And that's the tail and that's the fin at the top and it's a fish and the scales are all in here and there was a dragon standing over the top of it attacking it as there is here and this is the dragon venom and it's virtually identical to um, snake venom and it comes out of here and attacked this fish and ate into its vital flesh here now, let's just be sure that you understand this is a dragon. This is the head of the dragon right here. That's the bump they have on her nose, and the head runs around and down this way. Now, this is all sort of, I don't know what, runoff sort of stuff. And this is all the blood that oozes out all of the fluids from a de dead, decaying body. And it ran out all the way down to here from the neck, which is here. And there is the neck. And it runs all the way down. They call it the Dragon River or something, I believe. And these are, these are on ancient maps from just, the, I think, the 1300s show this dragon in the desert running all the way across North Africa. And this is all the dragon scales. I've shown this dozens and dozens and dozens of times and been rebuked every single time. Well, it's getting to a point now where people understand this is real, they just don't know what to do. And academia is in this position right now because they really have been called out on this. In the ancient texts, I'm not kidding you, we're going to go into this. It's very, very amazing. They knew what would happen, and it has happened. They've denied God and denied all of these things even exist. They, even right now, they still deny it exists when it's right in front of your face. So we got some serious issues to talk about here. And that dragon is gigantic. It runs all across North Africa. And that is exactly where it is on the ancient maps. And it, it, it also shows Atlantis being right here on the ancient maps. Which I believe that is Atlantis. I, you know, I'm almost, in my mind, I'm 100% sure. And the Straits that they always talk about is the Straits right here. And when Atlantis collapsed, the ocean that was here long ago ran out around the Straits, over the top of Atlantis, out into the ocean, and created the Cape Verde Islands. Not the other way around. They say, oh, it was an offshore collapse and it pushed all this stuff in. It's not. If you look at it, anybody that understands how water runs off, you can see the patterns, how it splits up as it comes out this way. It doesn't, you'd have to look at it a little closer. But anyway, we got a dragon and we got a fish. And we've got a collection of waters out here. And we've got ancient maps showing all of this. So it's time to, to take the, a new consideration of the ancient text. And that's what we're going to do right now. I, I did this post on, um, YouTube, on um, Facebook the other day, and I noticed I got a lot of people very, very interested. Because I mean, it is, it's all true. They had giants. I have them here on my property. I have all kinds of different species. No toes, I call them. We have the bones. We have geese. Still have the feather patterns in their head. Dragon scales that are pyramid-shaped and have all the same lines in them that the pyramids actually have. <laughs> and, they, and there was giant creatures in the earth in those days. And we need to start over on these texts. And I put up a, a, a story about Velikovsky and Worlds in Collision, and he did the research, and he is... This guy was fabulous. I, I'm studying everything that he wrote now because I now understand that he was correct. The oceans boiled. When the oceans boiled, it literally parboiled these creatures into a condition where they were able to be stabilized by a, a process called nucleophilic invasion. And what happens is when you boil out all of the volatile chemistry, it, it can be replaced in these muddy, um, mineral-rich waters. They've got a lot of metal, metals and minerals in them. They got transition metals primarily do the job. 
and they stabilize and cause it to to the collagens and keratins and all of the different fibers and um, membranes they all take on a new chemistry in this in this process and and I understand it quite well and I'm, my stuff's been um, DNA certified here it is right here it says I have several and two are DNA tested well three actually but here's the DNA test right here so it, it, it was well received and these are the DNA tests. This goes back six years ago. And it's time to make this well understood that these things were true in our past. And it's time to go back through the ancient texts and see what they really had to say and what they have to say about the people that are telling you what you have to say, which is your professors. It's not good. It's not good. I'm going to tell you that right now. And they used to be the early people that were the professors were prophets, prophets. They had to speak about the ancient religious things because at that time it was understood. So they professed, but they were called prophets. Now they profess and they are professors and you say what they tell you to say or they'll destroy your life. Back then you do what they told you to say or they nailed you <laughs> up on a cross or I don't know what they did to you but they, they back then they had religious authority over you now they just have financial and destructive authority over you and they, they reign it quite seriously over people that will not accept their their view of what happened here and it's, it's totally unsupported anymore and the support for the things that I'm talking about now are about eternity and this was excellent quality DNA sequences. These are giants, gigantic human beings. All right, so this is not something silly by any means whatsoever. I showed you this. Look, that's the fingerprints. Those are fingerprints. You see this? Those are the fingerprints. That's the palm of the guy's hand. I have the fingertip of it, and it's been DNA tested. They showed this is in the carvings. This was all real stuff. That's Jim Burchill and uh, Arlie Caudle down in uh, Kentucky found this head. This is that's a whole nother real story, and that was so seriously rejected it ended up sort of legal. I, that was DNA t tested on my my DNA test, and once I just showed you, there's three things. There was this lung, and the blood just gushed out of these things. There was this fingertip, which is almost three feet long, just a fingertip. And there's the fingerprints from that same fingertip I showed you a second ago. But we have all this stuff. So it's time to look at this in a whole new set of eyes, because already we have new species that they refuse to, to even examine. That's my problem with academia. And there, it was all written about how they would concoct stories. Well, let me just read you what it says. Okay, there's a ton of stuff written about false prophets and false teachers. And prophets were the teachers. They were the professors back then. Now they are professors. Back then they were prophets. Now, there was false ones. They were liars. They just wanted to, to harvest money from you and tribute and so forth, just as there will be false teachers among you now, false professors, secretly introducing destructive heresy, there's no God, there's no this, there's no that, evolution for all came from slime, forget about all that, obligations to God and to humanity, they even deny the master who bought them with his own life, bringing swift destruction on themselves, they're not going to end well when this all comes to its conclusion, which it will, it's, it's what they're writing. Many will follow in their depravity, and because of them the way of truth will be defamed, which it has. All right, I showed you the um, DNA reports, and this is one of the things that was on it. Now, this is a thumb from that hand, and this, this is the actual thumb, and this was when it was cat scanned. Now, you see this round thing here with the center core you see this round thing over here with the center core and then you see this right here this is the bone 
And that's where the impact of a thumb is. The thumb sits sideways where your, all your other fingers, this bone would be right in the center. And I have an anatomical I can show you of this in a second. Now, these are the, tendon, the, the tendons that come up the sides and one of them is white and one of them is black. And the reason is, is because it's, it's got to do with the blood. And the blood is different colors the, between the oxygenated and the deoxygenated. And one, the blood runs up, and one, the blood runs back. That's why the one's um, artery blood, one's vein blood. Now, this is the rocker of it. And I don't have much in the f form of CAT scans from this particular th um, because I changed software, that's what happened. I, I have all the stuff, it's just that you don't get a whole lot out of this either. Hold on, let me find another shot and I'll show you why you don't get a whole lot out of this. Okay, this is the fingertip right here. And we're looking at it here, and it's in this orientation. That is where the bone is, and the bone's right here. Now, you, this is why you don't see much in these, is because it's, this is a process called nucleophilic substitution. So everything that was in here that was biological has now been stabilized with some other chemistry that said, I can come to you and will attach and be stable, just like this goose head. All of the fabric on the outside of these, they call it feldspar. It's not feldspar. It's like this, well, you call it feldspar if you want, but it's, what it is, it's, it's literally collagens and keratins and fibers. And you can look at it in a microscope. You can see all the fibers. You can see everything. And it coats the bones uh, and the skin and everything else because they're, it's a fabric. And even when they're turned into uh, like a bone here. This bone, this is the membrane that coats the bone. They call it the periosteum, I believe. And then there's a pad on the top here, this little pad that rubs up against the other bones so that they don't, you know, we don't get our pain and the injuries there, the cartilage and so forth. And it has nerves and veins and arteries and so forth running up through. And when you break through the feldspar, which is the membrane, you get inside then you get into things that are black because those were things that had um, blood and uh, all, this stuff here all in here is the blood that's in your body and it runs it's it's everywhere it's ubiquitous in your tissues it's everywhere these are everywhere they transfer the molecules back and forth without these you die on cases is closed for you if you don't like iron iron you don't have iron you have no no oxygen going through your body all of these are transition metals transition metals means they they pull and push particles back and forth to make your carbon and all this stuff attached to oxygens and all that stuff they do all of this so anyway that's what makes these things turn in black into basalts and limestones. It depends on kind of what the chemistry was. Was it near a kidney? Was it near a lung? Was it near a heart? Was it near, you know, some kind of bile or acids or salts or stomach contents or, you know, feces? And they're all in there because these are all gigantic creatures that are all over the earth. I showed you the dragon. I showed you the I, I think I did. If I didn't, you definitely should see it by now, or you have seen it. And I showed you my giants, and this is one of the tiny ones. This is a little one. I have one that's at least five times bigger than this. So these things are, well, I don't know, five times bigger. It's, this is, what, eight inches long. The other one's about 36 inches, so it's well, yeah, four or five times. <laughs> it is what it is. And because it's so spectacular and so pointing to the original texts that were written, which we are going to re re-examining re right now, because Velikovsky did re-examine them. And when you get back to what Solon was taught by the priests from Egypt, who were the leftovers from this actual catastrophe that wiped out Literally, the entire earth was just wrenched, totally, almost completely destroyed. And it appears to have something to do with these gods. 
And it said, and this is only 3,500 years ago, and Velikovsky has this extremely well recorded. Every culture on earth speaks about it, and they speak about the dragons. They speak about the wars in the heavens and our heavenly brothers and all of our sky gods and all of these different gods that came down and, and, and watched over humanity and then turned it into absolute chaos. And that is all was written. So we have to look at this again. We have to look at it again. It was all written. It's so spectacular. I laughed. I laughed at it. Nobody could show me any evidence. And now I laugh at myself for laughing at it, for not paying any attention whatsoever. It, and now that the evidence is so absolutely undeniable to have academia stand in front of it and say, no, we won't look at it, that just exactly shows you how undeniable the evidence is. All right, remember I told you that it was a thumb that I was talking about. The bone had the piece offset. All of these fit right into the center of the fingers, the tips of the bone. The thumb, it's, it's an opposable thumb, which is a little different. That's why it sits way off to the side here. See it? It's a different rocker. I broke this piece off in the CAT scan. It was still here, and it had a hole in there and a hole in there. And, oh! And you could see where the fingernail was and all that stuff in the CAT scan. Um, but that's why it sits off to the side, and that's how I know it was a thumb. And I have a lot of the different parts to this hand. I mean, it wasn't, I don't just have the palm and so forth. I have fingers, I have knuckles, I have actually some of the other parts of the body, too. It's all out there. All right, let me see if I can explain this to you quite simply. This bottom one is a big toe. I'm not kidding you. I'll show it to you. And it has the same architecture as this does. Remember, this was the big uh, thumb. This was the thumb from, um, which is this thumb right here. Now, this is the bone part. I broke this piece off, which is this piece right here. I snapped it off of there to see if I could see what kind of blood is down in there and it's it's a little bit different chemistry than the bone itself this is the bone and what they're doing now is they're breaking off all the flesh of things and trying to get down to the bone and then they say oh there's the bone and that they think it's all concreted some stuff that just glued on there it's not it's this is the tendons. These are tendons. There's blood, and it's very simple to get blood out of these. They gush out of here, really. Now, this is that fingertip, and um, and that it, there it is in the CAT scan. Now, this is the toe. So this was down the other end. It's about 60, 70 feet down the way, and um, I'll show you that. Okay, I showed you on the big fingertip that there was a tendon here and a tendon over here. The same thing on your toes. And this is a gigantic toe. And these are blood vessels and so forth. And all of these little pock markers are, are from what they call areolar tissue. It's now they call it interstitium. Now, I have a little bit of moisture on here because it brings out the details a little better. It's hard to see, but you might be able to see a little dot here and a dot over there in the right light you'll see them. I, I, you know, I'll try to make it obvious, but it is. This is what happens. And this is just a gigantic toe. It's a gi and it went with that gigantic finger, but it was about 60-70 oh, feet down the, down the way. <laughs> and I have other ones. I have, I have a lot of body parts from this particular one. I have the hand, I have knuckles, I have fingers, I have the palm, I have all kinds of stuff. Oh. Again, it's a little wet here and there, but uh, I don't know if you can see those little dots there. Let me get this out of the way. Oh. Gravity, that happens every time. Alright, now there's one here and there's one over here. And this is the top of the toe. And they all have this little hook in them. Where the tendons grab the hold of it. And on my big finger, alright, hold on a second. You 
see the big finger same thing they have a little hook in there where it, it grabs in there and they hold on to the tendons all right that's just like this hook here I'm starting to understand this pretty good now. I mean, I have a ton of this stuff. I, it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere on my property. Now, all I can assume is that this particular area had what Velikovsky claims was the skies collided with Venus's incoming atmosphere. And it just created a fireball in the air and literally combusted the air and boiled the waters in the oceans. And it must have happened right in this region, because everything is 100% preserved. It's been completely boiled, and it's and and now I have the the microscope going, and we can look at some of the the features of the carrageens and collagens and the fibers and all that stuff. But um, see, this a little that one here is pretty obvious. This one here is a little harder to see, but it's in there. I think it's right there somewhere. I think that's it right there. But again, this is the invasion of boiled body parts and then invaded by the chemistry that lurked in these waters for probably years. And eventually they found molecules by pushing this way and that way through the transition metals and they found partners that they could stabilize with when they dried out that's what they became is rocks and mud and so forth it's pretty obvious at this point and it's time to reconsider now looking at giants and dragons and all these things that were written about they appear to be pretty pretty well true as far as I can see it certainly deserve another look you know, if there was people walking around with with toes that were this big, I mean, and that's that's not even big. That's the little one that I have. The other one's much bigger. As a matter of fact, hold on, watch this. All right, so you've saw, seen this little bone here, which is pretty obviously a bone. We're going to look at that in a microscope. You've seen the goose's head, which is quite obviously a goose's head, and the feathered pattern in his head, and... Um, We'll look at that in a microscope. You have seen the finger, which is in that CAT scan. Oops, right there. And the, the you know, the whole, all of the stuff about it. Now, what about this? What's going on here? That's a bone. <laughs> it's not concrete. It's always concrete. No, it isn't. I'll show you in a microscope. It's 100% bone. And this was, look at the size of the just think how big this would be this would this is you know absolutely absolutely gigantic and it's no question it's a bone and I will show you quite obviously it's a bone and I will show you what these look like in the microscope when you put a little moisture on them it brings out the blood and everything else and they all have the same tissues they're all we're all made of collagens and keratins and fibers and I will show you my belt <laughs> it is the same fabric, and it's the same fabric as our all oh, our no toes. Just say every all the fabric of the skin and the body is built from the same types of fibers, carriages, collagens, keratins, and they're all this fibers. Now they call them feldspar after they turn into stone. Okay, we're going to go all through these in the microscope very quickly, no big deal. That is the gigantic fingerprints. I have that right here. It is right there. This part here I got wet, this part I didn't. Those are the actual sweat pores and the fingerprint ridges. They're about the same size as my finger. So this is not a little puppy creature. That's what grip skin looks like, exactly what it is. And it peeled right off just like this, exactly the way that peels off. And it's thick skin. Um, and we're going to look at that in a microscope. Like I say, I wetted some of it just so that it, we'd be able to see the blood and so forth. Now, we're going to start right off by looking at my belt. Okay, that's a split leather belt. Well, what is split leather? It's nothing more than skin. 
And what is skin? There's nothing more than that right there. And if we could find that on all of these, and that's also fascia. It basically, it's a, a webbing of collagens and keratins that are on your skin. And um, let me see if I can focus in on it a little better. You see this? This is tanned, which means that they they put some chemicals in it and so forth. But look at these white and black and brown blotchy stuff. And then look at where the belt loop goes. You see all these fibers. You see the fibers? That's what runs from every one of those black little balls. They're, they're actually black little balls. And the fibers run from them. And that's what holds everything together. It's called interstitium. And right at the right here, you can see a... Uh, Let's see if I can figure out a way to get this in there. Here we go. You see it? It's pretty obvious what's going on there. And uh, that's what the fibers of collagen and keratins and keratins and all in your body are made from these different um, collagens. There's like 28, I think, right now they have. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more than that. But anyway, they, they, they have a different chemical signature. Some of them make stretchy, fibrous stuff that can flop around and this and that. So they make st stiff, springy stuff so that it opens the fluid-filled bags back up again. Other ones make these balls to anchor the straps. And they are they tough. They don't go bad. All right, I have a selection of stuff, you know, about Caesar, my, my goose head here. We're going to look at that in the microscope. We're going to look at the big fingertip here in the microscope. We're going to look at this bone, which is absolutely enormous. That's the curvature of the bone. We're going to look at this, what it looks like under the microscope. It's not concrete, trust me. I will show you. Now, this is the microscope. We can put them underneath and go up and down the distances, or we can go right up flush. Now, we're going to be looking at the no-toes, what that's constructed of, and it's exactly the same as the belt. Periosteum, which is the membrane that coats bones. All right, and then what's inside is the, um, the marrow and so forth. We're going to be looking at the big fingerprint that came from there. That's, just, that's this one right here. It's exactly what it is. I'm holding it in the exact same way. And these are the sweat pores. And that's the thickness of the skin. It comes right off just like it shows here. It peels right off because it's a very, very heavy, separate, dense skin. Then it doesn't melt into the rest of your skin. It's like a, and I tore mine up here the other day working on some things and it just peels right off. Now, we're going to look at all these in a the microscope. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up right now because it's just running way too long. Part two, we're going to go into all of the microscopic shots, looking at where the blood's coming out and where all of the different fibers and fabrics are, like I showed you in the belt. We're going to see it all in all of these specimens. That'll be part two.